Adam Sos here for Rebel News. Very happy to be joined now by Dr. Francis uh, Widows, and a uh, person we've had the opportunity to speak to quite often. I'd say you're probably one of the few academics who, in the conversation of truth and reconciliation, uh, is concerned about the truth part, and that truth part really does matter. My colleague, Drea Humphrey, recently broke down the details of a controversy in Quinell, British Columbia, involving a mayor being called to resign because his wife dared to share a book called Grave Error, a book that dared to question the mainstream narrative on the Kamloops residential school story. One of the book's authors, Dr. Francis Widowson, who has debunked the stories of human remains being found at Kamloops and shown that the purported unmarked 215 graves that kick-started the mass graves narrative are in fact likely septic tiles. Well, she joined me to discuss her book's involvement in the controversy, as well as to discuss the harsh response she received from some Quinell city councillors when she set out to set the record straight. Everyone's in an echo chamber. You don't have the same safeguards on scholarly research as used to exist, you know, 10, 20 years ago, where, where it would be expected that you would have to hold up your views to what's called disputation, which would yeah. be, you know, opposing evidence or opposing views. And you even have entities like the Canadian Historical Association, which is putting out announcements like there's, it's now confirmed the truth is already known. Yeah. This, this kind of uh, types of discussions, which are not academic at all. They yeah. are activists. What yeah. it is is a bunch of activists, which are putting forward their activist beliefs yeah and are really intimidating anyone who is trying to challenge what's being put forward. Just for Francis Widowson, what is your motivation for continuing to work in these fields that have garnered you quite a few headaches, I can imagine? Uh, the truth, seeking the truth. And that was why I went into the university system, is that yeah. I had difficulties when I was working for the government of the Northwest Territories, uh, putting forward arguments with Albert Howard about all the problems that were facing Indigenous policy there. Had a lot of difficulties and thought, you know, the area where I will be able to pursue these ideas is in the university system. And, you know, that was possible for, I guess, about 15 years. And now the university system has been completely captured yeah. by this politically correct totalitarianism where you have people like Sean Carlton who are making these arguments, which are highly improbable, and they just will not have any kind of rational discussion about them. So, you know, it's very, very disturbing. And I'm frightened for the wider society now, seeing what happened in Quinell, yeah. is that we have serious, you know, totalitarian pressures mm -hmm that are being placed on our uh, institutions. And if we do not fight back against this now, the whole you know, liberal democratic foundations of our system will be destroyed and we don't have very much more time to push back against this. The council entertained discussions about a private citizen. So the mayor's wife is a private citizen. She's allowed to share books with her friends if yeah. she wants to. What is there for city council to talk about with respect to this? And this was allowed to happen. And then everyone got dragged into all these discussions where motions were made to denounce the book and so on. So that was quite uh, shocking in its own right that this had taken place. And then um, at this meeting on April 2nd, um, because they allowed, uh, we waited until the questions from the gallery session, which there are specific rules about this, mm -hmm. and what they allowed, uh, because they're pandering to indigenous activists, was to allow all these indigenous activists to have these long statements that they were gonna be able to be made. Yeah. So we thought at the time, well, since these indigenous activists were be able to talk for five, 10 minutes each, then what would happen is that we would also be allowed to right. uh, put forward the statement. So I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I thought that we might be able to make a statement, but that was going to be unlikely. So I, I had a question, which I thought was the most important question of them all, right. which was the misinformation about the misinformation, which was being perpetuated by reading into the record this statement by the British Columbia Assembly of First Nations. Yep. And so I was able to clearly ask a question about that and repeat that, and then proceeded to get shut down by 
these two counselors, uh, Elliot and Rudenberg, who were unbelievable in their yeah. totalitarian type of mentality. Mm -hmm. I just could not believe that city councillors would yeah. act in the way that they were acting. It was shocking. It was absolutely shocking. Opposed to misinformation being spread and entered into the record. If so, does it agree that this is misinformation because there is no evidence of uh, unmarked graves at the Kamloops Indian Residential School? So okay. do you agree Point of that order, Mr. Chair, we will answer your question. in your records? Stop. Question. Okay. Council Rudenberg, would you like to take a so stab at that? So this is a question coming from a tenured professor who was actually fired from her role in the Department of Economics, Justice and Policy Study at Mount Royal in Calgary following allegations of workplace harassment and intimidation. This was during con tro controversy. This happened around comments she made on how residential schools had positive educational benefits and when she questioned if the abuse that occurred actually equates to cultural genocide as described in the Truth and Reconciliation Act. You really have no place here asking your questions. We really don't want to hear from you. And folks, we're obviously going to be showing the, the sort of footage as we have this conversation, but there, it wasn't like a, a, we strongly condemn your opinion or we're, we're not even going to acknowledge this. It was basically, you're not a person. You don't have a voice here. You have no right to question us. Um, serious, real academics have done work on this. Um, so you, you're, you're gone. You're out of here. Basically, they said you're persona non grata. It, it was textbook Marxist non-person status stuff, wasn't it? <laughs> well, um, I'm not sure about the Marxism aspect because uh, I do have, I do think that sometimes there are, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's aspects of that which can be brought into the whole equation. Of course, yeah. Um, but the situation is, is that they denounced a book of which I was a contributor to. So I should be allowed right. to question them and defend this work, of which course, I think yeah. is very, very important work and has all sorts of very, very well-researched articles in it. And for them to suggest that somehow, because I'm asking them questions that they don't like, they can act in such an unprofessional and undemocratic way is really hard to believe that yeah. that took place. Really seems with the Kamloops case, you know, everyone is really digging in to defend the false statements that were made on March 2021. And there has been, with respect to the Kamloops ban specifically, mm -hmm. the GPR was paid for by, I believe, the Canadian government. After the announcement was made, we had $7 million that was distributed to the Kamloops band, and we had a, a quarter of a billion dollars that went to Indigenous groups for all this, you know, right. is search for these quote unquote missing children, which no one has specified who's missing. And in fact, Kimberly Murray, who's a special interlocutor with respect to unmarked race, she said, she said, actually made an announcement that th there are no missing children, that the children are buried in cemeteries. So what you're talking about is um, people whose relatives, you know, great a grandmother or great grandmother, you know, sort of distant relatives, they don't know where they're buried. So um, this is like an issue. Maybe this is important and should be investigated, but that's not the same as saying missing children. Right. And what we need, we have three things that we really need to come out of the Kamloops case. The first is Sarah Beaulieu's report. The GPR report needs to be released to the public. That has not been released. That's been kept private. Why, we don't know. And this will allow the methodology to be examined that Sarah Bolio used, which is, is, seems to have been flawed because right. she didn't look at the septic tiles. Secondly, there was an RCMP investigation that was started, but uh, the intervention from Murray Sinclair led the RCMP to back away and turn it over to the band. And we need the RCMP right. to be investigating this. They are the they look at criminal matters and it has been said by Joanne Archibald who was the AFN president that it was a crime scene yeah. and thirdly we need excavations to start at Kamloops right. and they were saying that they were going to do that in January 2022 we've waited three years we still have no excavations and they're now saying that all sorts of 
things have to be done before this can start. And really, there is no reason why we can't start to look at at least part of that uh, location to see whether there are any remains there, but no one is doing that. Final question for you. The sort of vitriol that you encountered, given what has happened since the Kamloops sort of mass grave narrative, which has now been downgraded to uh, unmarked grave and will continue to probably be downgraded until they confirm no one's found, but 100 churches have been burnt down, vandalized, destroyed. I've seen many of them with my own eyes. My own church, in fact, was subject to vandalism. Those folks on city council, is there no degree or measure of sort of introspection as to maybe we weren't quite right, and as a consequence, a lot of religious communities have suffered. Does that just not cross their mind? Well, I think they are using Indigenous people for their own benefit. One of the strangest things that I saw was the councillor Scott Elliott was in fact involved in the protest and was holding up a sign which said, Love, Not Hate. So these councillors are pretending that this is all about love uh, Mm -hmm. and peace and so on, and nothing could be further than the truth. What they're actually doing, if you found out that your relatives had been, your children, your children of your relatives have been killed and had been buried in uh, an apple orchard, obviously you would have great hostility towards the people that you thought had done this. But instead of trying to correct the record and say, no, that was just um, an error that was made and we need to say no, um, you know, until we have excavations, we we won't, you know, it's it's unlikely, it's highly unlikely that there are clandestine burials in Kamloops. Um, Instead of saying that, People are just digging in further and are continuing to imply that some sort of nefarious actions were occurring. And this is really, uh, you know, uh, you know, sort of adding fuel to this hatred that is occurring within Indigenous communities. Well, thank you so much. That's Dr. Francis Woodison. Really appreciate your time. The book is Grave Error, How the Media Misled Us. Uh, selling very well. Hopefully they, they don't try and take it down or anything, but uh, selling very well. Pick it up while you can. And as always, for Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. Hey guys, if you want more of the truth behind what happened at Kamloops, check out our full feature-length documentary at kamloopsdocumentary.com.